Good morning and welcome to our virtual edition of Good Morning Winter Park. My name is Amy Morgan, Associate Vice President for Programs at the Winter Park Chamber. We are absolutely thrilled that you're here convening with us virtually this morning. Um, while we're sad we can't convene in person, we are glad to have this opportunity for you to learn and network with each other virtually. To start off, we'd like to invite you to introduce yourself in the chat box and let us know who you are, maybe give us an update on your business and take this advantage to do a little bit of virtual connecting. In addition, I will share that as the presentation gets started, I'll be closing the chat box feature and we'll be accepting your questions in the Q&A feature of Zoom. You can find both the chat icon as well as the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen if you're watching on Zoom. Hover at the bottom portion of your screen, a gray banner will appear and you're welcome to click on either of those icons. If you're joining us on Facebook, we invite you to comment and introduce yourself as well as drop your, your questions below. With that, we'll go ahead and get started. I see we have a few people that are introducing themselves in the chat box. Thank you and I encourage others to do it as well. And to get started, I will go ahead and introduce our president and CEO of the Winter Park Chamber of Commerce, Betsy gardner Eckler. Good morning, Betsy. Good morning, Amy, and welcome to all of you. We are absolutely delighted to have you with us here for Good Morning Winter Park. And this is the first time I've been in our offices, which we are phasing our reentry to. So we hope that transition is going well for many of you as well. This is a wonderful time for us to get caught up on what I think is the most exciting project. Uh, Winter Park scene, since I'm familiar with my history in Winter Park of 1981, dating back to that time, we have so much to look forward to, um, thanks to our library, and I can't wait to introduce you uh, to the topic later on today. But before we get started, we really wanted to talk about the purpose of the Winter Park Chamber of Commerce and why we are doing things virtually. Our job and our mission is to convene people uh, for the benefit of our businesses and our community. And we have been doing that virtually since the emergence of COVID-19. And we've hosted almost 50 uh, webinar presentations. So we are thrilled to be able to do this in a virtual setting today, try to keep our community connected as we uh, move through the challenges of this pandemic. And we are grateful to Advent Health for enabling this content free of charge and as a gift to our community. So I would like to begin uh, by inviting uh, Dr. Christopher Olakuga from Advent Health, who's a board certified general surgeon dedicated to providing compassionate, high quality and safe patient care. His academic and surgical excellence have earned him multiple accolades, including the Chairman's Outstanding Graduating Chief Surgery Resident Award at Howard University and the Outstanding Graduating Resident Award and Graduating Medical Students Resident of the Year Award. Dr. Olukuga stays abreast of the latest surgical advancements and has authored abstracts, publications, and presentations. And we're so fortunate to have his talent both here in our community and with us this morning. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Olukuga. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much, Betsy. Uh, hello, Winter Park. Good morning to Winter Park and thank you for having me here. I'm Dr. Christopher Olukoga. I'm one of the general surgeons here at Hadron Health in Winter Park. And uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity to uh, represent uh, uh, Advent Health. Um, and we, we're very grateful uh, for the community support through this pandemic uh, that uh, unfortunately we're still going through. Um, but we are slowly phasing out of it. Um, but we're grateful for the words of encouragement um, from the community for the donations uh, uh, that people have received and most importantly for people who are social distancing um, and trying to keep the community um, at large safe. Um, Advent Health uh, remains committed to the safety of the, our team members, um, to our patients um, and their families and as well as uh, the community at large. And we really hope um, that uh, as we slowly phase back into normalcy as we will know it now, um, we will continue to maintain social distancing um, and, uh, and hopefully people would uh, respect uh, those who choose to wear masks uh, 
out there for their own safety um, as well. Uh, but we are prepared um, should there be another uh, uptick um, on, on the number of cases and we get a surge um, and we will support the local businesses as they uh, gradually reopen um, to keep the community at large safe. Now that said, um, this is her Hernia Awareness Month. Uh, I'm a general surgeon. My partner is Dr. Vega, Enrique Vega, and we both practice general surgery, uh, including hernia care. We uh, know that a lot of people do not know what a hernia is, um, and in this short spiel, it's hard to go over all, all, all the intrics, uh, intricacies uh, for hernia care. However, hernia is a bulge. Um, it uh, comes about as a result of uh, um, tissue uh, and an organ in the abdomen um, or in another cavity protruding out. Um, they, they can be uh, benign uh, initially without any symptoms, or they can cause a lot of pain and discomfort and they can uh, interfere with their quality of life. Uh, we're, we're in 2020, soon we're gonna be checking out into 2021, um, and there's a lot of advancement in medicine that provides um, excellent care for hernia patients um, with uh, little morbidity in terms of minimally invasive approaches, including using the Da Vinci robot uh, or laparoscopic techniques, um, where patients are able to have their uh, hernias uh, managed and go home the same day uh, with little morbidity. Um, and, but hernia care begins with a self-examination um, and then uh, going to see uh, either your primary care doctor or, um, or see a surgeon, especially after you've done your Google check on it. Um, but we are here um, to provide uh, excellent surgical care uh, should you have a hernia uh, better dealt with earlier rather than later um, in your progression. I will be here um, and I'll, I'll kind of hang on here for a little bit in case there are questions uh, that I can answer. Uh, but again, on behalf of Advent Health, uh, I want to say a big thank you to the community for their support um, as we start coming out of this pandemic. Thank you very much. Kathy, you're on mute at the moment. Thanks, Amy. Thank you, Dr. Lakoga. It's so nice to hear, quite frankly, about a medical condition that's not COVID-19 for me Amen. personally. I appreciate you updating us on that. And thank you to Advent Health for all your support. Amy, do we have any questions for Dr. Lakoga? We do have a shout out to you. It says, thank you, Dr. O. You are a blessing to your patients and to our community. So we wanted to share that with you. I appreciate Anything else that. at the moment? Uh, no other questions have come through at this time. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning, Dr. Olakoga, and for thank reminding you, us about uh, other medical conditions that we can be focused on. We really do appreciate that. You're most welcome. So at this time, it's my privilege to welcome a special guest. Uh, we have our mayor, Mayor Steve Leary, on with us this morning. And Mayor Leary has spent significant time, energy, and political capital advocating for this tremendous project that we have underway. He's a great friend to the Chamber of Commerce, and we are really grateful. Um, I asked him if he'd just spare a few minutes for us this morning and give us a little bit of context and history and update about the project from, from where he sits as the mayor of our city. And we're really grateful to welcome Mayor Steve Leary briefly before um, we speak to Sabrina to give us a little bit of context about the library project. Mayor Leary, thank you for making time to be with us this morning and welcome. Hey, thank you, Bethy. Uh, thank you, Chamber, for this opportunity. I, I believe you said the mayor will speak briefly a couple times. It sounds like you're, uh, you're used to dealing with politicians. So uh, I will be brief. We are full steam ahead with the project. Um, as of last two weeks ago, uh, we received support to continue moving forward. Uh, we hope to be going vertical very soon. Foundations have been poured, uh, so we're, we're moving forward and uh, we will have a tremendous asset. I asked if I could crash this meeting uh, to really publicly recognize today's guest too, though. Uh, the Library and Event Center, to be understated here, has been an interesting path. Uh, Sabrina can bring you up to speed and I think she's going to, but she's worked tirelessly for years with city staffers and our library and event center design team to create what will be a tremendous community asset. This is the library that users of the library want. This is a library that the families of Winter Park want. This is a library that librarians want. Um, the programming that will happen inside will be transformational. 
Sabrina has been critical to seeing this entire thing through to this stage. She's led a dedicated team of individuals with the assistance, guidance, and support of the library board of trustees and her hard work. Uh, sorry, Sabrina, your hard work is only going to lead to more hard work because once the walls are done and the doors are open, the programming and the operations contained within that will service the citizens of Warren Park and businesses alike are just going to be amazing. Um, I'm telling you, we, we are so excited to have you lead us into the next phase of, of the Winter Park Public Library. Um, and thank you for all you've done thus far. Uh, we have ways to go, but uh, I'm more confident now than ever before. We have the financing, the funding all set up. We're in great shape. And Sabrina, you've been a trooper. Thank you for standing alongside us and for leading, too, in so many ways. So uh, I have to run. I know you all know it's going to be a busy day here in Winter Park today. I wish I could stay to hear, hear more from Sabrina. But uh, I really just wanted to take this opportunity and crash this, crash this meeting to say thank you for all the work you've done so far, Sabrina. We look forward to more of it. Mayor Leary, thank you. We know this is a really busy day for you. We really appreciate you taking time to, uh, to be with us and, and show your support for the library. So many thanks. We know that you've got to go. So really appreciate it. So it's my privilege now to introduce Sabrina Burnett, who is the Executive Director of the Winter Park Public Library. And I would say a great friend, not only to the Chamber, but to me personally. And I am thrilled that she has been recently named the Executive Director of the Library. Um, the Library connects residents, businesses, and entrepreneurs with knowledge and resources that amplify learning. Sabrina believes the Library can play a critical role in actively supporting economic success in the community by providing access to technology, assistance in writing resumes, and applying for jobs, a robust curriculum that helps people launch or grow their own small businesses and develop essential skills. Uh, we rely on the library to assist with our relaunch programming, which many of you all know uh, enables women who've been at home with children or caring for family members to go back to professional work. So we're grateful for the ways the library supports that initiative. After spending over 13 years in public libraries, where Sabrina held positions in marketing and communication, youth services, research services, and systems management, Sabrina knows the library's integral role, role in local economic recovery and how library resources can help in building your business. In addition to her experience as a library professional, Sabrina has invested in the community as a graduate of Leadership Winter Park Class 27 and as a volunteer for Youth Leadership Winter Park since 2017. Sabrina holds an MLS in Library and Information Science from the University of South Florida and is currently working toward a certificate in nonprofit management with the Edith Bush Institute for Philanthropy and Nonprofit Leadership. Do join me in welcoming Sabrina Burnett. We are so glad to have you here with us today, Sabrina. Thank you, Betsy, for that introduction. And thank you, Steve, as well. Setting the bar a little high, but we'll do what we can. Um, I wanted to talk this morning about a whole lot of things. Uh, we're going to save the juicy part for last and talk about the new library. And I'm afraid we won't even scratch the surface of everything the library has to offer today. But the few topics I wanted to discuss this morning are our response at the library to the pandemic and the available services that we have to help you all now, the business services you may not know that we had, and our summer reading challenge for those who want themselves or their families to stay engaged and learning all summer long. And then finally, of course, our new library on the horizon. Can you all hear me? Because it looks frozen to me. Yes, Sabrina, we hear you. You sound great. I saw Betsy's face got frozen for a second. Um, so before we get going, I do like to always mention how unique our library is. So the Winter Park Public Library was founded in 1885 and maintains a very long-standing and uh, a public-private partnership with the city of Winter Park. So unlike the majority of libraries in the U.S., our library is a 501c3 nonprofit. So we do receive um, some support from the City of Winter Park annually and an operating grant, but we also must fundraise annually to ensure that we can continue to deliver high quality access and education to our community. So because of the pandemic, we were closed for a few months, but I'm happy to let you all know that now we have reopened at limited capacity to the public uh, on June 1st. 
that we're offering computer assistance, public Wi-Fi, curbside item pickup, unemployment assistance. You can come to the library and access computers there to fill out unemployment forms online, or if computers aren't quite your thing, you can pick up paper forms as well, and we will mail them for you at no charge. Right now, our hours are a little abbreviated. They're Monday through Saturday from noon until 6 p.m. And we do have, uh, from 11 a.m. until noon, our senior and immunocompromised browsing hour. So you can visit us in person, but you can also access a huge amount of resources through our virtual services and collections. And before we get going, let me start my presentation here. And we'll talk a little bit about how you can get access to these amazing things. And if you'll let me know if that's working. I don't see it yet, Sabrina. I'm getting a message that says screen sharing has failed to start. Okay, let's give it a try again. Check in the settings. It looks like everything should be good. All right. We'll try it again. How about it just came up. Perfect. Thank you for your assistance there. Perfect. And just so you can see, as we said, we've got our current hours there. Curbside service is available. You can get, we'll, we'll bring it out to you in the parking lot. Call or request your materials online. So speaking of access, uh, how do you get connected to the library and access all the great things I'm about to tell you about? There are a few ways. So first, of course, is if you're a Winter Park resident, you can come get a free full service membership card. And for the first time, we are actually offering registration online. So uh, uh, another change because of the pandemic, you can email account services at WPPL.org and we'll get you set up. And we've got, oh, uh, my screen, uh, did something strange for a moment. Can you still see? Yes, it looks great. We didn't see a change. Okay, thanks. Uh, you can also take advantage of a really unique offering if you're a member of the chamber. So for those of you listening who are chamber members, we offer chamber cards and that's one per business. And this allows you as an owner or an employee to have a shared card for your organization that gives you full access to our online services, whether you're a resident or not. And as an added bonus, there are no late fees on our chamber cards. And if you'd like a full service card, but you aren't a resident or a member of the chamber, you can purchase a full service membership annually. The cost is $125 or for less than the cost of Netflix every month. And finally, if you're an Orange County resident uh, or a Maitland resident, we do have reciprocal membership with those organizations. You can get a reciprocal card. It won't grant you full access to our online offerings, but it will allow you to check out materials from our facility. So now that we're all connected and we all have our library cards, here are some of the things you can get. Um, as all of you know, times are weird and hard and uncertain right now. And many of you may be struggling as business owners or employees. So I wanna emphasize the resources that you have access to right now at the library that can help you build skills uh, to give you an edge in the workforce or in running your business. Uh, and we have some great books to listen to or read as well. So you can download eBooks and audiobooks from our Overdrive app, uh, which is called Libby and read or listen anywhere. It's as easy as downloading the app and putting your new library card number and then searching for the title you'd like to read or listen to. The great thing about our virtual collection is it's 24 seven, it returns itself. You never have to worry about due dates again. We have fiction and nonfiction titles and if we don't have something in our Overdrive collection, you can request it and we may be able to add it to the collection, all from within the app. So if you'd like to travel uh, or you want additional skills on your resume, we offer Pronunciator, which is a premier language learning platform, um, which is on par with Rosetta Stone or Duolingo, if you're familiar with those. You can learn nearly 100 languages, including sign language, and it will critique you, um, provide vocabulary building skills. It even offers side-by-side -side translations for movies and music. If you're looking to keep up with hot news, the latest trends, or thought-provoking articles, we offer popular digital magazines through our Flipster platform. 
These magazines are great for loading onto your phone or tablet uh, before a long flight, a visit to the doctor's office, so you, you don't have to touch magazines there either. Um, these magazines are anything from Business Week, Fortune, uh, Forbes, Kiplinger's Personal Finance, also Cosmo, uh, L, Highlights for Kids, Ebony, Country Living, HGTV. It's a lot of titles available for you. And similar to our Overdrive collection, they, uh, they return themselves and there are no late fees and you can download years past of previous issues. This year, we've also introduced streaming music, movies, and TV shows through our Hoopla app. Another great app you can download where you can binge watch, get your latest full album from your favorite artist, or even check out comic books, ebooks, and e audiobooks. And for those of you looking for online learning, we do provide full access to LinkedIn Learning, which was formerly lynda.com, if you're familiar with that product. Uh, with LinkedIn Learning, you can learn professional skills in business, software, technology, and creative industries. It includes classes on how to use business staples like Excel and Access, but also things like graphic design, photography, and video production. All of these things that are becoming more and more relevant um, to workers, our business owners, and the world that we're living in today. It's truly a fabulous resource that's actually used by, for employee training by industry giants like Adobe and Google for their own employees. And we've got an extensive list of premium databases that you can access through our library website. So we'll buzz through these really quick. I do encourage you to check them out. Uh, for the data nerds out there, we have Reference USA. Uh, this is a great resource for advanced searching uh, provides a lot of deep dive information into all sorts of data points that you could be looking for if you're if you're trying to increase your marketing uh, pen, your market penetration your sales you can look at other businesses find employee numbers uh, you can identify business subsidiaries and branches so you can see business structures you can learn how much other businesses may be spending on advertising and you can even find home-based businesses that don't have a storefront or might not be um, readily available in terms of how you're finding them on the street more for the data nerds again we have demographics now so this uh, focuses on demographics and you can actually find all sorts of consumer buying habits through this product this is great if you are looking to launch a product, uh, test a product, and you want to know how consumers might behave. It can help you identify gaps in the market, um, and it can help you increase your own sales um, by figuring out what your consumers are looking for right now. It lets you run all sorts of reports, really get granular. And then we have Business Insights Essentials. Again, more great data for you. Uh, this one is industry focused and provides company narratives and it contains lots of analysis. So it provides things in more context than just strictly data. And it provides you also with histories on companies, um, investment information. It's a great resource. So now that you've done all of that research using all of those tools, you can access our business plans handbook series. So if you're, if you're ready to write that business plan, but you're not quite sure where to start, we have a complete collection of templates across various industries um, that provide a lot of different options for how a business plan might be structured. So I don't know about you all, but for me, it's always easier to start with an example than it is to start from scratch. And this resource does that for you. If you're in manufacturing, if you're in retail, service, it's got it all. So you can actually download those very specific to the area that you're looking for and use those uh, to craft your own business plan. And then of course, we do have in-house tools and you can come visit us at the library. We have a specially curated business collection that is located next to our research desk on the first floor. And we also provide forms and things so that you can uh, come to the library and grab those if you're looking to get incorporated, form an LLC and do fun stuff. And we've got our librarians on deck to help you navigate all of this. We also do maintain an updated set of the value line investment reports and stock analysis at the library and it's updated weekly. So that's something that you can come in and browse. And if you are in the library, you may also want to check out the historical archive, which is located right next to the research department. This is all a great tool for our local business owners if you're trying to find out the history of a property that you may be looking to purchase or that you're operating out of. 
Uh, you can find details about when it was built, um, when the streets were, were put in, uh, where things were located, how things were platted back in the day. So it's a really fascinating resource that could also help you figure out what businesses have gone before you in our town. And switching gears a little, when you're done with all of that research and you're exhausted from writing that business plan, uh, you may want to kick back and read a good book. So if you or anyone you know is looking for something fun to do this summer, we have moved our library's annual summer reading challenge fully online. We are offering prizes to folks who participate. And uh, when you sign up, we'll also give you a free book of your choosing while supplies last. Last summer, the reading challenge saw our residents read over 10,000 books. And we are aiming to do that again this year and we would love your help. Of course, as most of you know, libraries across the nation host summer reading initiatives every year to help combat summer reading loss, which is a phenomenon where children who don't have access to learning resources over the summer see skill loss in the fall when school starts uh, and it puts them behind their peers. So this summer reading lag is something that has been extensively studied and it's cumulative and it's a very real danger for educational success for our kids. So if you do have kids at home, I encourage you to help them sign up and get excited about what great stories they may find or what activities they can complete that might spark their imagination or curiosity during our summer reading challenge. Uh, and of course, to round out our time together today, I wanted to take you on a quick whirlwind tour of the new library and let you see what features you'll find when we open the doors to our new facility hopefully in October of 2021. And you'll have to forgive the librarian pun because we like to call this our next chapter. You can see here an aerial view of the site and the library is the large building on the top left corner. This slide shows you the immediate view when you walk into the library. It's our grand hall, or as we refer to it, the library commons area. And this is really designed as the community living room. So this is a space where you're going to browse, lounge, you might bump into a neighbor and have a great conversation. It's the central point in our library and all of our active spaces are located right off of it. So you can see there's a great monumental stair that leads to our second floor. And on the sides here on the left, you'll see our you can see into our archive. You can see a little entrance into our premier lecture space, our rake theater there. Uh, towards the back, we have study rooms. And over on the right, the yellow is indicative. Uh, the color schemes may change, let me warn you. But the yellow, for now, is indicating our computer lab. This is another view on the first floor. So you can see it's a great use of space and light. We've been able to actually bring our shelving heights down. So if you've walked into the current library, you may have noticed the shelves are very tall. It's very dark. Some of the, some of the walkways are pretty narrow. Uh, the new design actually incorporates the building itself into some of the features. So if you'll notice the entire interior perimeter on the first floor is actually built in seating benches. And you can't see it in the surrendering, but they have outlets all around the building so we know we have people that are going to come and sit down put their bag down get their computer out it's a great spot uh, the shelving heights have been brought down so we've increased our sight lines and our visibility and it's also um, we're able to bring those shelving heights down and still increase the overall collection capacity by on average 30 percent in some cases it's even higher this is the uh, lecture space, our raked theater, and this is a really ingenious design as well. So everything in this library was designed to be, in a sense, multimodal or multifunctional. We wanted everything to be flexible and we wanted uh, our spaces to have uh, several different jobs at once. And so in this space, as you can see, we have these wide, deep stairs that come down and we can put two rows of chairs on them for a lecture. We could swap those out with a row of chairs and a row of training tables, or we could remove all of that furniture completely and the stairs themselves become open seating. So when we don't have an activity or a lecture or performance happening at the library, it's open to the public to use as a great space to again, lounge, study, hang out, read a book. 
Uh, similarly, this is the view into our computer lab. We do not, unfortunately, have a computer lab in our current library. We don't have the space, but we do in the new library. So we're very excited. And again, this space is uh, multifunctional, so it can be bisected. The, the front part is our computer lab, and the section at the back is our maker space. So they're located adjacent to each other. The maker space is where you'll find all of our cutting edge and innovative technology at the library. It includes our 3D printer, our laser cutter, our digital die cutter. Uh, we have some conversion equipment, and we've also got um, uh, high-end graphics computers. So we've got uh, computers where you can come and use the full Adobe Creative Suite if you're looking to create flyers, posters, business cards. We've got it all. And this room is actually uh, has a wall that, that closes up so that we might be able to have a class happening in the computer lab and folks innovating in the makerspace, or we can open it up, as you see here, and run one large event. Located right off of the computer lab in the makerspace is another brand new space to us. This is our business center. So the business center is something new uh, that we knew we wanted in the new library because we know how important it is to support folks who are entrepreneurs, our local creatives, folks that are trying to get work done, starting a business. It's a great spot to come in, get your laptop, do some work. You'll be able to access that curated business collection. You can check out a laptop or a tablet. Uh, get your printing uh, done. And on the left-hand side of the slide, if you'll notice those two blue doors, one of those leads to our new recording studio. We know a lot's changed in the industry, and uh, we're hearing from folks that they may have to do things like video resumes now. So this is a, a new space for us. We don't have this in our current library, but we'll have the recording studio. So you might come in and record that video resume or your latest podcast, or you might record a demo tape. Uh, it also serves a great function for us um, that we might record oral histories to help uh, build our collection for our archive. We're still on the first floor and we're looking at a rendering of two of our study rooms. We do not have individual study rooms available at the current library, but in the new library there are eight. Four on the first floor and four on the second floor. So uh, these are sort of geared towards the age services on each floor available. On the first floor, it's mostly adult services, and on the second floor, it's mostly youth services. So we do anticipate that the four study rooms on the first floor will mostly be utilized by our adults and on the, the four on the second floor by our youth. This slide is showing you a view inside our new historical archive. We've nearly doubled the size of our historical archive, which is a great, uh, a great for us because it means that we can continue to acquire and preserve uh, the things that make Winter Park special. We have a new research space available to the public and also a teaching space and an expanded area for our memory lab. So that is a service that we offer a very limited uh, capacity now. You can come into the library and we will help you digitize those old photographs, diaries, postcards, journals. We even have a scanner that will scan photo negatives and our archivists can help you make sure that you too can preserve your precious family memories. Now we are jumping to the second floor, which is our youth services area. And you can see here a view looking south toward the lake. Again, great open spaces. We were able to bring those shelving heights way down, which uh, for us was important because it increases browsability and safety and sight lines for our little ones. Uh, we've increased the collection here on the second floor for the youth from anywhere from 30 to 50%, depending on the collection. We've got spaces for homework and study, and we've got uh, spaces now uh, for, for merchandising so that we can share uh, curated collections with our young folks too. Another view from the second floor on the other side, you can see that the architects made uh, great use of the interiors of all the walls. So unlike a lot of traditional libraries who have those, those stacks, those book stacks that you're used to browsing, the architects uh, came up with something new and actually recessed some of our shelving into the walls, which was one of the reasons why we didn't have to uh, take up so much square footage as we originally expected because when we make those calculations as librarians they're based on the assumption that we're going to use very traditional stacks. We're still on the second floor and we're looking at another new space to us. This is our teen social and study space. So for our teens and tweens, those are middle graders too, this is a space where they can change the furniture around, get comfortable, do group projects, plug into those TVs, we have a, a, an exceptional partnership with the NZN every year, and we run a real uh, 
real teen short real short film festival, real teen short film festival. And so we have some budding uh, filmographers. Um, they can show their work here and present it in the library as well. We're very excited for that. Still on the second floor, you're looking at our new imagination room. This replaces our old story room and it also increases our capacity. So the current room seats about 40 kids, if you don't tell the fire marshal, and the new space uh, seats 60, and the wall that you're looking at in the back actually folds away. So again, we have these spaces that are very flexible and they're doing, doing double duty. So that wall folds away and the room actually increases to hold 100, which is great news for us because it means we can reach more families and more kids and provide more classes and activities. We also have a sink, finally, in this room, which let me tell you, my children's librarian is very excited about. And now we're looking through that wall from the previous room, and you can see this is our community meeting room. Another space for classes to take place. Um, we have all sorts of new features, like these whiteboard walls we can work with. And you can see, too, that uh, the way the building was designed, the sight lines are just incredible. So it's glass through here. It's glass on the other side of the imagination room, allowing us to keep an eye on what's going on in the library in a way that we really can't do now. And then this is our emergent and early literacy area. So for those of you not familiar with the terms, emergent literacy refers to the ages of about from birth to the age of age three. And those are the years where uh, cognitive abilities are developing and the brain is actually forming and learning about language and language is developing in the brain. And it's a little different than early literacy, which is after their brain has developed the capacity for those skills, then you're talking about building, building your vocabulary and your phonological awareness. So early literacy are the preschool years. That's about the age of three or four to about the age of five or six. Uh, we haven't really been able to have a dedicated space for that, but we do in the new library, which is very exciting to us because we know how incredibly important that this time is for the development of our young ones. And it's an indicator of future success and outcomes. So if you don't have good foundational um, foundations in emergent early literacy, it's an indication that you might not have success later on in school or in work or in your health um, in a lot of different areas. So we're very excited that we'll be able to do more for that. Uh, and that's, that's the end of the tour of the library. So I'm happy to take any questions. Um, and I wanted you to see that you can access again 24 seven all those great resources that I mentioned on our website. And if you do need to get a card, we're happy to help you. You can email account services at WPPL.org. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing now and go back to the main screen. Thank you, Sabrina. And for those that are joining us live, we would like to invite you to ask your questions of Sabrina. Um, you can do so by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen if you're on Zoom. And that can be found by hovering towards the bottom of your screen, clicking Q&A, and then typing your question, and we'll address those as they come in. If you're watching us live on Facebook, you are welcome to drop your question in the comments, and we'll be monitoring there as well. Um, also, if you would like to just share a comment or um, a um, praise for the library or for Sabrina, you're welcome to place that in the Q&A area as well. You don't need to praise me. But <laughs> yes, we do. You're doing an amazing job, Sabrina, and um, I just so thoroughly enjoyed your presentation and seeing those photos. Um, it's really exciting to see them come to life and to hear you explain all the amazing things that will be able to be done there. Thanks for having me. Great journey for us. All right. Well, we did already receive several questions. So let's see. Um, okay. This question, Sabrina, is about scheduling space. Are chamber members able to schedule space in the library for meetings? Yes, that's one of, that's our plan for the new space. So we do have uh, what I didn't have a picture of for this presentation. We also have three small group collaboration rooms in the library. And the study rooms and the group collaboration rooms, the community meeting room, all of those are going to be available to the public for scheduling. Wonderful. Okay, we have another question from our audience, and that is about the Genius Lab. What are the current hours of the Genius Lab, and how large a space will be available for video production in the new library? 
The Genius Lab is not currently open because of our reopening phase, um, but the new space is also nearly double the current space. I would have to look at the exact square footage, but in the current space, we don't have a recording area for video production or sound, and that's what's moving into the recording studio in the new library. Wonderful. Uh, next question, do you foresee extending library hours for more maker spaces, et cetera? Did David ask that? <laughs> no, Terry Creighton. <laughs> I saw David in the audience. Uh, definitely, um, especially because with the way that the new facility is designed, our current facility, unfortunately, the, we have a full-time staff member who runs both our public technology um, assistance and our makerspace, and they're located on two different floors in our library. So it's hard uh, logistically for him to be in two places at once. In the new facility, that's why we designed the computer lab and the makerspace to be adjacent to each other so he can monitor both spaces and we can increase the hours for our genius lab. Wonderful. Um, we have lots of questions coming in, so I hope you're ready for these. Um, okay, Sabrina, can you please talk a little bit about how our residents have been using the library during the pandemic? Oh, uh, yes. So uh, they've really been using our online resources. We had over a 400% increase in all of our online circulation. Um, before everything started, we made the decision to actually increase the number of checkouts that you're allowed. And so we've gained probably close to, I think, 300 new card holders just because of the online resources. A lot of folks have been taking advantage of registering online. We've also had our librarians doing some online classes, uh, some story classes and different things. So you can check out our social media because we do them on Facebook or on YouTube. And we've had um, curbside service since mid-May, and that's been very popular. So for those folks who maybe don't want to come inside the library um, because they have concerns or they're just on the go, now they can call or go online and request materials. And we have about a 24-hour turnaround. So we've seen quite a few people take advantage of that. Um, we reopened, as I said, on June 1st, and we reopened at limited capacity. So we're seeing approximately 200 people a day coming into the library, um, which is a little low for us because our normal daily operations, we see anywhere between 600 and 800 a day. Amazing. Well, it sounds like a great resource during the pandemic. Um, lots of positive comments coming through. I'll read a couple of them. Uh, Sabrina, thank you for sharing your vision for the future library. We're excited at Valencia Winter Park Campus to partner with you and your team. It'd be a wonderful expansion of our current services for students. So just a thank you there. Um, and then another, another comment from Valencia uh, Winter Park, actually. I really want to take a moment to applaud all of your hard work in bringing this space to fruition. We're so excited to see your space and thrilled we're going to be close neighbors. Um, yeah, they're very excited to continue exploring possibilities for collaboration with programming and et cetera as you plan for the future. Um, I'm just working through the comments, so bear with me. Um, okay, another one we have is, have you come up with a plan yet on how to schedule space in the new Genius Lab? Uh, well, we have existing software that can do that. It's just not something that we've, we've used currently. So yes, we will be able to um, basically make the Genius Lab a reservable space um, for, for whatever you might be looking for. Okay, great. And we'll just take a couple more questions um, here. Um, this one says, wonderful idea regarding the recording studio for video resumes, et cetera. Will that include actual AV and recording equipment or simply a quiet space where an iPhone can be set up? We're gonna give you the equipment, absolutely. Amazing. Um, and then another great comment. Great job, Sabrina. Thanks for sharing. So excited for the new library and loved getting a tour of what it's visually going to look like. Um, so thank you so much, Sabrina, for answering our questions. And thank you for those that submitted your questions. We were um, so pleased to be able to address them. And so pleased to have you on, Sabrina. It's been great. With that, I'll pass it back to Betsy to help close us out. Thank you, Amy. And Sabrina, you are just a star. We're so, so excited that you're bringing all your energy and passion 
the creative way that you've pivoted and approached the pandemic to see your circulation surge at a time when a lot of people are trying to figure things out. You had it figured out right away and executed to perfection to meet the needs of our community through both content and opportunity. And we can see that the library is really going to be kind of an iconoclast. It's gonna be something that helps us rethink what a library can and should be in the 21st century. So we are thrilled that Winter Park is gonna be leading the way globally. We have this amazing, significant architect uh, Sir David Ajay, who's designing all this, we couldn't be more excited to really see this come to fruition in our community and democratize opportunity here within Winter Park. So thank you for everything you've done to tend the flame of this project. We know it's a huge amount of work to both run the library and oversee this project. So we're incredibly grateful for your energy and expertise uh, overseeing both of those. Thank so uh, we are having more programming we want to tell you all about. First of all, we'd love for you to follow us on social media if you're not doing that right now. We are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, LinkedIn. And if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, we'd love for you to take a minute, pop over to winterpark.org and just put your email address in our landing page and we'll make sure that you get our newsletter to connect you to still more content. And some of it we hope will be with updates about our fabulous library project. So um, we have an upcoming webinar next week. We have two webinars. One will be how to do a Zoom event led by Amy Morgan and Tiffany Cahill who do this for us. And we've had a lot of requests from organizations saying, can you all teach us how to do Zoom events the way you do them? And so they'll be leading that content on Wednesday to register for that log on to our Facebook page. And then on Monday, we have such an exciting uh, story to share with you. We are gonna hear about uh, a dog with a job, how a pug went to work during a global pandemic. One of our recent relaunch graduates, Sarah Davey, is gonna share her family's journey of becoming social media famous through videos of her pug, Disco, who's had millions of views of his TikToks during this time. She'll explain what she's learned and share the next innovative steps her family is taking now that they have this platform. So come here from Sarah and Steve Davey, and I'm sure we're gonna gl get a glimpse of that celebrity dog, Disco, on Monday. So we'll look forward to having you back with us then. To register, go to winterpark.org. I thank you all for being with us today and wish you a fantastic weekend. Many thanks. Thanks again to the library, to Sabrina, and to the board of directors who've done so much to help shape the future of our community, and indeed to our mayor, Steve Leary, for joining us this morning. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care.